So a lot of you that have known me for a while know that I've had a fascination with the idea of making perpetual motion and human power generators. And over the years, that all the different experiments I've done, I've never been successful at making perpetual motion. And I realize this totally goes against the laws of physics. So what I'm doing is probably a little crazy, but I just love experimenting. So I always like the idea that maybe I can come up with something somebody else failed to figure out. Anyway, I've, I've made some very unusual motors in the past, and I've got one of them sitting out here on the table. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about it and talk about why I uh, built it this way and what I had in mind. All I'm going to do is let this thing spin for you here. You see, this is a funny looking motor. It's got about 10 pounds of copper wire in it. And I'd say it's, uh, let me see, we've got 40 rare earth neodymium magnets on the shaft here. And there's a reason I built it this way, and it had a lot to do with this uh, guy I used to follow. He was very interesting, very controversial actually. His name was Joseph Newman, and he claimed he could get more energy out of a motor than what went into it. Well, I built several small-scale motors of what he had constructed, and I've never had success. And I'm not really sure that he really was able to do what he claimed he, he could. But he's, he's an interesting character. He's actually an inventor. And he was very intrigued with the idea of making a, a, I guess you could call it a perpetual motion machine. He claimed he found a way to take the uh, <clears throat> atoms off of copper wire and turning it, in, turning it into a generator. Anyway, I'm going to put a link to his uh, video or a documentary around his life at the bottom of this video so you can see a little bit more about him. But basically, his basic theory, and he had several different theories that seemed to go with this motor, was that if you wound a bigger coil for your stator coil, you would have a uh, bigger magnetic field coming off of it than you would with, let's say, with a smaller motor like something like this here. And the whole idea was that if you had a bigger coil and more magnets inside of it, that you'd end up getting more torque out of the motor. In fact, in one of his motors he had put together, it, I believe it was a, uh, oh, I believe his coil weighed, uh, what was it, several thousand pounds or something like that, and I, was, I think it was a 650-pound magnet that went inside of it. So I thought I'd build a motor based on that theory just to see how efficient it is. And what I see here is that after all this work of putting all these, <clears throat> all these magnets on this uh, motor and causing this thing to rotate, it's really no more efficient than any other motor of a much smaller size like what you see here. In fact, the guys that built these, these type of motors here, the conventional motors that have the iron cores and the coils, they knew what they were doing. They weren't stupid. There's a reason they built them like this rather than like this. Nevertheless, it's still fun to experiment. Now, if you take a look at a motor like this, you can see the way it's got a lot of individual coils in it. And it's got an iron core, and that iron core helps transfer the magnetic flux from the stator coil that you can see here. And it, it, uh, it very efficiently transferred it into the, uh, the coils here, so you're able to generate a lot of power. In fact, I've got one set up here. I don't know if you can get the camera on this thing here, but I've got a little wheel here. When I turn this, this is actually generating alternating current, and you can see the light coming on there as I turn it. That's a 12 volt lamp. So I'm probably putting out about half an amp right there just by turning it. You can see the way the needle kind of flops back and forth there. Anyway, that's just a conventional motor, and that, this one here is probably a lot more efficient than anything I've come up with here. Nevertheless, how can you not be intrigued by this sort of thing? In fact, one of the things that amazed me is how far the magnetic field on this thing goes out. So for example, if I take this thing here, and I hold my uh, my coil up above it. You can see this thing is. Uh, let's see if we can get that thing to light up there. See the way this lights up. It's transferring the magnetic flux from down here all the way up to this coil. In fact, I can pull this magnet out of here. This is kind of a. There we go. You can see there the way that thing is flopping back and forth or flickering back and forth. That's producing alternating current. Now what I liked about making uh, motors like this, and this one for example has about three miles of wire in it, and it actually generates several thousand volts just by spinning this magnet side of it because it's got so mu much wire. It's much like a transformer where you've got the turns ratio that determines your, your output. You know, the more turns you have on your secondary, for example, versus your primary, you're going to get more power out. And so I just loved experimenting with this sort of thing. Here's another one I put together. I got this coil out of a microwave oven transformer. And I designed it so I can pull this off of here and put it on different coils. Here's one, for example, it's got a much thicker wire on it. And because it's a thicker wire with fewer turns, it produces more current but less voltage. Where this one, on the other hand, 
which I believe was the secondary out of the transformer. It's uh, <clears throat> got a lot more turns on it, so it produces a much higher voltage. <clears throat> now, if you're out and about and you're, you're looking for a motor <clears throat> that will also work as a generator, one way I've determined you can figure out how efficient it'll work is by the, uh, I guess you can call it uh, the lens effect. When you try to turn the motor and you short out the, the windings going to it, you'll notice the motor is harder to turn. So any anytime I'm out and about in a uh, junkyard or whatever and I'm looking for a DC motor that might work with this generator, I'll often short the wires together and turn the shafts and see how hard it is to turn. That tells me a lot. So one of the other things I was going to say, the, uh, the other thing that Joe Newman used to talk about was how he could um, uh, utilize the back spike coming off the motor is, that he designed. And I never understood that because the back spike, that initial spike was actually reverse polarity. So I found that ra rather interesting. Now this coil here I thought I'd show off as well. This is one a friend of mine wound a long time ago. It's got a huge magnet inside of it. And I'm guessing he's probably got at least 20 pounds of wire here. A uh, very thin gauge wire. And uh, the whole idea again was to get this thing spinning and he had hoped at some point it was going to put out free energy. So I guess this free energy bug has, has bitten a lot of people and, and until you uh, start experimenting with it, you may not realize there's so many governing effects that affect the outcome. You know, the funny thing is you can look at something like this, uh, what do you call it, a Newton's cradle. Nobody would ever expect the, the ball on the other end to bounce higher when it when it's struck on the other side. But when it comes to magnetism, nobody looks at it that way because, it, I guess because it's invisible. We don't really know what to think. Now, I've, I've bought several DC motors over the years. Here's one I picked up. Uh, this thing uh, probably is 30, 40 years old, my, made by, what is it, Lear Siegler. And I was surprised at how efficient it was. In fact, when I pull the string here, you can see I can light up the light there. And I was going to put that on a small electric go-kart at one point, never got around to it. But uh, these motors here are also very efficient. In fact, you can see when I turn one, it turns the shaft on the other. And uh, something like this, this is actually, even though I've got this really powerful magnet in here, as well as and this one here, these are actually very inefficient designs. I mean, when you consider the amount of torque you put on the shaft to get the power out that you do, it's actually less efficient than a motor like this, or like this one here, because of the uh, magnetic coupling between the stator coil and the armature. So. Anyway, the, the, they say, according to the laws of thermodynamics, the most power you're going to get out for about 746 watts input, if you had a motor that was 100% efficient, would be, what is it, uh, one horsepower. So if you can beat that, I guess you're onto something. Now, the other thing I was going to say, one of the other fascinating things I've discovered with all this is that you don't realize there's all these built-in governor effects to motors until you actually build one. For example, I didn't know what counter electromotive force was in a DC motor until I actually built one, and I saw that the motor didn't spin as fast as you'd expect it to based on the amount of torque that was at the shaft. And so, um, anyway, I thought that was interesting. By the way, this is something I picked up on eBay. I know a lot of my listeners are interested in this sort of thing. This is a little generator, a little hand crank, crank generator. I think it'll probably put out... Oh, it doesn't say the amperage on it. A lot of it's written in Chinese. But I think it'll probably put out close to an amp. And it's got several outputs on it. It's got a USB port, so if you ever had to charge a phone or whatever, or anything with a USB port, you could. And what do we got here? Three, three volt output, 5, 6, 9, 12, and 15 volts. So that's something I thought was uh, kind of a neat thing. It's just a permanent magnet DC motor in here, by the way, with gears on it. And, uh, of course, a lot of you have seen these shake-up flashlights here. It utilizes the same principles what you see here. You've got a, a coil in there with a magnet that plops back and forth. Anyway, so I guess that's about it. I just wanted to uh, show off my latest toy here. It was a, a lot of work for not a lot of, uh, how do you say it? Didn't, didn't come up with anything new, I'll put it that way. I'm not, not getting any free energy out of this. There we go, it's spinning a little faster when I do it that way. But it sure is fun to experiment with. In fact, uh, if we take my compass here, watch this, I'm going to take this compass, I'm going to put this all the way over here, that's probably about four feet away, and watch the compass when, the, when I turn this thing, <laughs> you can see the compass turning. It's amazing how far this magnetic field goes out. I'd like to uh, do a measurement later and find out just how far it goes, the way I've got these magnets laid out here. 
Oh, by the way, uh, it turns out that human beings are capable of generating, um, what do they say, 300 to 400 watts comfortably. So if you built a pedal generator of some sort, you could comfortably produce, what is it, three or 400 watts, and up to 2,000 watts for brief sprints. And um, let's see. Well, I guess that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoy the video. As always, uh, <clears throat> if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. Let's see how, let's see how far we can get this thing to light up here. <clears throat> you know, even without the magnet, you see it flickering there. What's this? Look at the magnet. Just look at how far away it is from the other magnets. Look at that. That's crazy. I'm probably about, what, four feet away right now? Still turning it? Oh my goodness. I can't even go high enough to get this thing to quit turning. Now, if I put a core inside here, it would probably turn, it'd probably light up even further away. If this has no core, it's just hollow. But look at that. Unbelievable, huh? How can you not get excited about magnets? <laughs> Does it look good? Yeah.